Hello everyone, welcome back to GTNH and I'm really excited for this episode as today we're going to try to get our perfect B. Oh, just look at how cool that build is up there. <laughs> so in the last episode we built the hives, which is a place for everything bee related. This is going to be built to store all of our alviaries and all the bees that we're eventually going to have on passive, which we'll have to make a start on breeding today. So what does our perfect breeder bee look like? Well, it's going to have something which is the longest lifespan. We want blinding production speed. We want it to be tolerant of the climate. We want 4x fertility and we want 4 bonus stats. The 4 bonus stats being diurnal, nocturnal, tolerant flyer and cave dwelling. These aren't strictly necessary. Tolerant flyer is, uh, can work during the rain. Cave dwelling can work with blocks above them. Although in our build up there we don't have any blocks above the alvary. And in the personal dimension, which is the dimension that we're in, it's permanently daytime and it never rains here. So these stats aren't actually strictly necessary. But we are going for the perfect bee, so we might as well, if we're going through all this extra effort, <laughs> and this is going to be such a grindy episode, at least for me, um, but I'm, I'm absolutely determined to get this bee right here. So long as there's nothing like absolutely insane, like uh, needing the quadra or infinity blocks or something ridiculous, <laughs> but we're going to get the perfect bee today. Actually, let's leave that on. Just as a reminder, we can maybe make this our daily objective board um, or episode by episode, we can update this thing. Yeah, maybe whatever we write here, we try to turn off for the end of the episode, marking its completion so we can reset next time. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, we're going to have our daily objective board here. So I started to do some preparations between episodes and the first thing I done was craft up four acclimatizers and these four machines uh, gave us a request and it kind of got me thinking, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of genetic manipulation today, a lot of DNA handling, so I was just going to place the the acclimatizers in one of these pods here, which was built for the, the alviaries and all of the, the bees which are going to handle production of combs. But no, this really isn't the place for it, and uh, so I kind of was thinking, you know, we should build a genetics lab for all of this, uh, for the acclimatizers and for a specific mutation setup. So I basically just started placing blocks and the ideas kept flowing. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good actually, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, but yeah, we're going to be such evil biologists today. <laughs> it's going to be glorious. Um, so yeah, we've got an extension onto the hives here. It's nothing super fancy. It's a pretty small area, but it doesn't need to be any larger than this, I don't think. So we have our acclimatizers here on the left from the genetics mod. I also did wire in some power and an applied energistics connection down here, um, which we'll come back to later in the episode. We have some other uh, things to do before we touch these acclimatizers. Um, but yeah, we're going to have our alviary right in the middle here, which is going to be set up specifically for mutations. I originally had a lot more white in this build, but it kind of didn't fit with the theme that we have. Um, in the hives, we only actually have this one band of white, which goes like almost all the way around. Uh, so too much white in here kind of didn't really fit the rest of the build. So yeah, we kind of toned it back a bit and made it fit with the rest of the hives. Also looks pretty cool from the map as well, it's like the head of the bee. I don't know. It's some kind of messed up, genetically mutated insect, whatever it is, with this uh, big circle on its back as well. Uh, so first of all, we do have to craft an extra alviary. And I was uh, paying attention, We somehow I have two extra alviary blocks, we need 27 for the full multi block, so we need another 25 of these casings crafted. And we're short some honey here. Oh yeah, and we have <laughs> we have our beekeeper here. We have Diddy and we have Metis. I, I didn't really want to leave them down there at the tower, so I kind of brought them up here next to the hives. So far, there hasn't been any booby traps up here, so I think we're good. I think we're safe. Right, guys? Right, guys? <laughs> yes, yes, we're safe. Yeah, so we're short some honey. We could go back to the nether and annoy those wasps again, but I think really by this point, we should put it on passive.
Alright, well I don't think the machine set up here is going to win any points for style, but we do now have honey on passive. We have an MV fluid extractor, which is fluid extracting both honey drops and honey dew. And these are outputs from the centrifuge from various combs. In fact, there's 97 different combs that will give us these honey drops and also honey dew. And they can be fluid extracted for 100 litres of honey each. I believe the honey drops also give us a chance output at Propolis, which we're just going to store. So we're taking or we're requesting benzene from the main fuel supply of our main network and inserting with a pump. Eventually though, as I mentioned last episode, I really like the idea of having the bees fully self-sufficient. So when, when we're able to make diesel from the bees, eventually this will be swapped out and we don't have to use benzene for power. But for now, just to keep this fully passive, uh, we are going to request benzene and use the gas turbines to power the fluid extractor. Although I think super long term, this is eventually going to be in a multi-block, maybe even a processing array. Um, but yeah, for now, the, the little MV gas turbine, or the MV fluid extractor is, is plenty fast enough. Um, so the honeydew and honey drops are requested by the subnet, the yellow net, which I did have to put a ME controller on now, since we're above eight channels. So the items are taken on conduit into the machine. This one has an extraction filter for honeydew, um, and we're safe just to leave this on always active, since there's no other use for honeydew. The proven frames here we can actually get from Diddy upstairs. Um, Diddy here will trade us six proven frames for an emerald, which is a steal. Uh, so there's not really any need to keep the honeydew, but the honey drops on the other hand, we have a level emitter to control the extraction. Every time you scan a bee in the bealizer, it costs a honey drop. And we're going to be doing this like hundreds of times today. So I want to make sure that we didn't fluid extract it all into honey. And so we have a level limiter here controlling the conduit. This conduit is only allowed to... We just lost our block there. Magnet is off. This conduit is only allowed to extract with a redstone signal. Right, so we have enable or active with a signal. And this is only allowed to extract honey drops from the interface. And the level emitter will measure the quantity of items in a network. In this case, the yellow net where the honey drops are stored. So whenever we have more than 512 in the network, it's going to emit a signal and tell the conduit to send the honey drops into the machine. So this is just a simple way of keeping stock when you're doing uh, passive automations like, like we are here. Um, but yeah, then the fluid is extracted on the Ender Fluid conduit. And this goes back into the orange network, not the yellow network, because we don't handle fluids on yellow. It goes back into orange, and over here at main fluid storage, we should have a super tank dedicated for honey storage. And uh, yeah, we're down to 14, 14 buckets. Since I did already craft the alviary, I set this up uh, multiple hours ago. But yeah, we got our alviary, and we also have the electrical stimulators and the things for the mutation setup. But first of all, I want to run you through some of the other changes that I made over here. You might remember we were using the advanced stocking bus for the centrifuge. However, I realized that it was eventually going to get stuck. Some of the items, I believe it was the dripping comb. No, it was the stringy comb can give us propolis, which we also get from the fluid extractor. So that's going to end up in our yellow system and try to be pulled into here. If we were to use the advanced stocking bus, pull everything. Uh, but we don't want that because if you centrifuge propolis, it gives us sticky resin, which would then end up in the system again. And centrifuging sticky resin gives us refined glue. And yeah, our yellow network is not set up to handle fluids. And to be honest, I kind of want to keep it that way. But additionally, we do also make sticky resin from stick reed from the crops. And that is already sent back to the overworld automatically. I believe it's this centrifuge here, which will give us the refined glue and uh, things like sand and plant balls. So there's really no need to process it twice. And uh, yeah, using a regular stocking bus does mean that we have to set the filters here, but we have precise control on exactly what we send through this centrifuge. One of the other changes I made is to our item ingestion, I guess you could say, into the yellow subnet. So you might remember that we used uh, an interface underneath the alviary. I went ahead and removed that interface and placed it in this room and switched it out with a dimensional transceiver, which is capable of sending and receiving fluids and sending and receiving items. So doing it this way means we have one centralized power source for all of the 
all of the alviaries, and we can also get away with just using one interface to ingest the items, since the items are sent to the transceiver, all to one centralized place. So yeah, we have four LV gas turbines, we're still burning refinery gas, and we have one HV in the back there as well, supplying power to the capacitor, then into the transceiver, then to the receiver transceiver, I guess you could say, then to the conduit, then to the alvary transmissions. There is, I believe, a 500 RF attack upkeep for the transceiver, uh, so it does cost us slightly more power to do it this way in the short term, but we're going to save power long term as we don't have to have as many interfaces and uh, not as much wiring underneath. I did experiment actually with uh, trying to cover up the wiring. Uh, we're going to add like cable facades or conduit facades under here, and I wanted to also cover up the dirt. I was just experimenting by uh, maybe bringing down the yellow blocks one block and then covering it up with this cubit, which I kind of like actually, especially from down here. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an improvement, so I think I'll do that all over, um, but I'll do that once the bees are breeding, so... Man, these episodes are just ballooning out of control. I don't know how to make a short episode anymore, like, it, it used to be easy for me to make, like, a 20 minute episode and I'd be struggling for content, but not in GTNH. I'm, I'm like... I'm actually struggling to cram all the content into the episode, but a lot of you guys seem to appreciate the longer style, the more uh, raw style, and to be honest, I prefer making it this way, so yeah, we'll, we'll just uh, play it by ear, I suppose. But yeah, similar to this fluid extractor power situation here, I do want to switch out the refinery gas eventually, we're down to 2 million. We started with 4 million two days ago. Yeah, I want to switch it from uh, diesel, which we're going to make from bees. And speaking of the bees, let's get this ball rolling, so we'll head into our genetics lab. I did uh, collect most of our bees. I'm gonna have to sort all this out, and I will sort it all out, but, uh, oh no. So we have our ignoble, or the pristine stock in here. We have all of our extra drones, and then all of the, all of the garbage bees in here, basically, all of our ignoble stock. So if you guys saw the end of the last episode, we had a look at the electrical stimulator upgrades and used diametine electron tubes to boost the production of the bees. Um, but here we don't need production at all, right? Here we're not worried about making any combs from the bees. In fact, it would be ideal if we didn't make any combs for the bees, just to have less output to have to worry about, as this is designed specifically for mutation. So for mutation, I believe the max you can get is 8 golden electron tubes, which will increase mutation by 50% per tube. So what we're going to do is two intricate circuit boards with four golden electron tubes, and this should give us the maximum amount of mutation chance. Not every bee is going to be 100%, 100% chance to mutate. Uh, one more intricate circuit board. Yeah, not every bee is going to be 100% chance to mutate, but... At least my understanding is anytime it says 8% chance here in NEI to mutate, with the two intricate circuit boards, eight golden electron tubes, that should be increased up to 100%. So yeah, basically everything on this page, except for the agrarian princess, which is 6%, so below 8%, this will be less than 100% chance to mutate once we give it all the upgrades in the alvary. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, so we're going to add these two intricate boards here into these stimulators. And we're also gonna go, go ahead and do another four intricate circuit boards with obsidian electron tubes. And the obsidian ones will give us, in the electrical stimulator, will decrease lifespan by 19%. It's essentially gonna emulate the oblivion frame, which we would normally have to recharge, but doing it this way means that we're using power uh, for to bring down the lifespan of the bee. And uh, I believe it takes it down to one bee tick, one bee cycle, before the queen dies and outputs the drones, at which point it has a chance to mutate. So essentially we're just trying to get as fast mutations as possible. And I believe this is the optimal setup. So it's 21 obsidian electron tubes. So that's 20 obsidian tubes, we're left with one. And remember on the circuit boards you have to fill every slot when you program it. So we need the lower tier of circuit board and I don't remember which, which one holds only one. Is it the basic? Is it this one? Yeah, so there's our 21 obsidian electron tubes. So we'll need to have the appropriate amount of electrical stimulators. This does also, I believe, increase power cost as well. Actually, let's not put it in the middle because we are, for some mutations, you need a specific block underneath the alvary. 
so we need to leave this one free and it has to specifically be alveary casing block. It can't be any of the um, optional upgrades. So are we missing, I think we might be missing a stimulator. Yeah, we're missing a stimulator. Let's go ahead and request this one. So we'll also have to give it power as well. Each stimulator does take power to run. So we're gonna add a dimensional transceiver and this is gonna connect to the one that we set up earlier. So we want to receive power from the Hive's channel so it will receive RF into the transmission. I sincerely hope that this is the correct setup for a mutation. It's entirely possible that I've made a mistake here and that we find that there is optimizations to be made, but um, I guess we're about to find out here. So let's build our alveary. We're waiting on that last stimulator. It's now crafted. Let's get that in here. That should form the multi-block, right? Aha, there we go. I was missing one in the middle. So we now have our uh, alveary set up here for mutations. And the first thing we're going to do is try to get that blinding production speed on the queen. So I think we'll do the first few together and then uh, I'll do the rest off camera because uh, just to give you an idea of where we're going here, we need to get to the, the Stardust Princess. We want the Stardust for its blinding production and that comes as standard on this species. To get the Stardust though, we need the Ender Drone. We need the Zinc Drone, which comes from Iron Tin. So we're going to pick up a lot of extra species along the way, all of which we can put on passive. So this actually is going to kill two birds with one stone. Um, yeah, so we need tin iron to make the zinc. We need tin copper to make iron. We need clay diligent to make tin. We have diligent, but we don't have the rest. So uh, yeah, even just the clay one. Oh no, we have industrious diligent. Yeah, let's try to get the clay princess first. Um, so there is actually an extra requirement for the clay princess. Normally in the red text here, there are some extra specific requirements. Maybe a biome it has to be in. Or in this case, it requires clay as a foundation. So that foundation block has to be the bottom middle of the alveary. So it has to go right here. And the one above it has to be the alveary block. So here, I believe that's the right form of clay. We had to mix the diligent with industrious. Uh, fortunately, we have both of these bees already and they are purebred so far. So industrious plus diligent. Let's just try this out here. So what we're hoping is going to happen is it's going to be one bee tick. So it's going to be extremely fast for the queen to die. And we should get a 100% chance at mutation. Oh, it looks like the queen was already in her, in her production cycle. So we might have to wait for this one to finish. Yeah, for this queen to die. These all do have power, right? Yeah, they're all 100% charged. Yeah, I think it just has to reach the next cycle. Okay, queen is dead. We get a princess. We get two drones. And let's start this cycle again. So now it should mate with a diligent. So from the top of my head, I think a bee tick is 27 seconds. Oh, it worked. Aha, nice. Nice. We got our pristine clay princess. This should be... Well, maybe not the quest. It might be a... a yeah, it might be a half-breed. Let's find out here. Oh, it is. It's pure clay. Wow, okay, so we should have a request for the clay bee. Okay, that's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> okay, so now when we have a new species, we want to we wanna generate as many drones as we can. Just in case we ever lose the clay bee, we don't ever have to go from... I mean, yeah, we don't have to breed from scratch again. So for all of the new species, I want to get at least a stack of drones. In addition to the acclimatizers, I did also work on crafting up some uh, world accelerators. And you can think about these things like Gregtech Time in a Bottle. It's basically a tick acceleration block. Yeah, we are going to craft four of these world accelerators. And so three of these are going to be used for the acclimatizers. So they're going to go... Oh, wait a second, wait a second. These are HV, this is EV power. Oh, <laughs> threefold nearly exploded in the new genetics lab again. Um... Wait, hold on. How do I have this set up underneath? It was last night that I wired this in. Uh, so I don't remember if I placed the transformer and I didn't. Yeah, so this wire here is, is vanadium gallium. This is LUV. So we're going LUV down to IV in this transformer, then IV to EV. And this goes into our centrifuge under here. This is why you, this is why you color cable. This is EV. And this one is LUV, which for us is green. 
This is going to get moved though, to be fair. So, uh, yeah, we'll just do this just as a reminder. This is LUV power. This cable here is going to be EV power. So we want a high amp transformer. And we're going to switch this to half mode. So instead of doing 4 to 16 amps, it does 2 to 8 amps. So 2 amps of IV into 8 amps of, e of EV. And we're sending it that through 8x aluminium cable. So this is correct. Then we need another transformer at this side because we just crafted HV world accelerators. However, the world accelerator, as you can see here in TE mode, which is tile entity mode, uh, that's the mode that we're going to have it in. It consumes 6 amps of HV power. So we somehow have to supply 6 amps of HV to each one of these. And we're also going to put another one here. To be honest, I, I completely forgot that that was EV power and this is HV machinery. So um, <laughs> I think we'll do a battery buffer or something. I'll figure it out later on. But for now, we're going to use this one here. This is also EV, so we do need a transformer here. You know, while preparing for the episode, there's always something that you miss. I thought I would, <laughs> I thought I was just going to be able to plug these in, but that's almost never the case. So we need a high amp transformer here. That's going to take our EV power into HV power, and we're not going to run both of these at once. Uh, so whenever we're running the acclimatizers, this setup is not going to be running. But this one is going to go HV here. I think we're also going to put a machine controller on this as well to be able to turn it on and off. And also a lever. So we want machine controller on the top, lever, active with a signal. I guess we'll do safe mode as well. And we also want this on tile entity mode. Okay, no explosions this episode. <laughs> but what we're essentially doing here is because you can't tick accelerate the Alviary, I mean this is already pretty fast, it's, it's only 1B tick which is 27 and a half seconds. I'll have to double check that number, but it's, I think it's around 27 seconds for a single B-tick. Um, but you can't get that down any lower in the Alviary. Uh, so what we're gonna do is actually use an Apiary, which you can tick accelerate since it's a single block, if it's in tick acceleration mode. So we can use the world accelerator to speed up the Apiary and we can drop it in the clay princess and the clay drone and turn this on. Oh, of course, no flowers. You know what, Metis? I think you're uh, you're going to be able to help us here. As always, <laughs> I'm going to buy some flowers from this guy. Why not? That is a terrible deal. Seven emeralds for a poppy. We'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. We need it. Okay, let's put our flowers down here. Now it should breed together, right? Is this thing on? It is on, but we want the oblivion frames in there as well. Uh, so if we do this, that should take it down to one B tick. Yep, there we go. Now we have two drones, which should stack, right? Now we have four drones, which should stack. <laughs> oh, this is excellent. And I think we can actually use three Oblivion frames, right? Look how fast this is. This is crazy. Yep, there are six drones. Yeah, so remember the princess is going to give us the drones based on its fertility stat. Ideally, we want this at 4x. Um, so, which is why we're going to actually start with the Majestic. The Majestic drone is going to be our Breeder Bee. This is the one that we're going to try to get all the good stats on and pass on to the rest. I don't actually think I mentioned in this episode, but the purposes of doing this Breeder Bee is to be able to pass the stats on to the rest of the bees, right? So we want the perfect stats on the Clay Bee, but we have to get this Clay Bee to unlock the perfect stats. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation, but this is why we're trying to make the infinite amount of drones so we can yeah get these species back on the queens and then pass the stats on to them oh this is amazing i think all we're missing for this now is a setup to repair the oblivion frames so we need to bring our uh, thomic restorer over here and uh, now that i'm thinking about it it might also be nice to put all this stuff in the b subnet as well from this specific apiary since we're going to get some production out of the bees actually no we're not because there's oblivion frames yeah, these were made before the Oblivion Frames went in. And Oblivion Frames decreased production by 9,000, so you get nothing. The Oblivion Frames are really only good for this purpose, um, which is essentially what uh, we're emulating here with the Obsidian Electron Tubes. It's essentially emulating the fact that we have the Oblivion Frame in the Alviary, but we can't tick accelerate, which is why we're using the Apiary here. 
I hope I'm actually talking sense this episode because there's a lot of rambling, a lot of information to try to communicate. And I'm not always the best at that, but um, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm working on it, I suppose. But yes, we now have our 17 drones. That should be enough, but I want to go for the full stack. And you know what? We can actually, I just realized, we can make this more efficient or uh, yeah, easier on ourselves if we use a conduit here. We can use the self-feed for the conduit, which is a good tip, actually, you guys left from from the alveary setups. Instead of uh, using filters from the alveary into this chest here for all the drones, yeah, instead of messing with the filters underneath the chest to make sure that only the finished product is extracted back into the ME system, we can instead use the, the self-feed on the conduits. So they have this mode called self-feed enabled, and you can just set both the channels to be the same. And this should cycle the queen around in circles, right? Yep, as you can see, you don't need a storage container attached or anything. And in fact, what I might do is put it underneath. Yeah, the only thing we have to watch out for now is the oblivion frames, but look at this. We are just printing off bees here. <laughs> oh, you'll love to see it. We're going to have the biggest hive the world has ever seen. So full stack of clay drones acquired. We can now make infinite amounts of clay drones. The next one we want to go for is the tin bee, which requires a block of tin. And the clay drone is, of course, useful. We can put this on passive and get passive clay production. I'm not sure how useful clay is. Oh, he just gave us an emerald. <laughs> He's given us a few. I don't know which one it is, though, if it's Diddy or if it's Metis. But hey, we're getting, like, the occasional emerald every time we run by, which is nice. I don't know if this is all part of their plan, though. That might This might be just to try to <laughs> sweet talk us, <laughs> keep us uh, nice and happy with the emeralds. Uh, when actually there's something going on behind behind the scenes. Hmm. Do we trust these two? Look at them looking at each other. <laughs> Giving each other the, the look. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure how useful the clay bee is going to be, but we're going to get, like, basically all the all the bees. All the bees. <laughs> so next we want to get tin, right? So tin is going to be clay plus... Yeah, clay plus diligent. And this is a 13% chance, so it's higher than 8 and so with the upgrades we have in the Alveary, it's going to be 100%. So we do have the Diligent Drone. I'll have to print off some more of those. Um, but yeah, Diligent plus Clay should give us our Tin Bee. And also probably a quest if we've unlocked it. Yeah, we have. It's going to be the next one. But you can see here that I'm going to be at this for uh, quite a while getting like all the bees here. I suspect that at some point we're going to be blocked by something. At which point I'll bring you guys back. But for now... 27 seconds later. Well. Come on, little clay bee. You can do it. Make a tin bee. Assuming we have the right block of tin, because there is sometimes chisel variants or, like, Greg Tech variants. It looks like it worked, though. We have our tin princess, two tin drones, and the quest. Perfect. I brought the Thomic Restorer over here, by the way. And we can now just print off the tin bee. Let's get the tick acceleration on. Hmm. Our Tin Princess is actually not happy in this environment. It's going to be too humid for her. Well, this is where the acclimatizers come in. So with the acclimatizers, we can also give these power. So let's actually just get another dimensional transceiver. That might not be enough, though. We might have to switch this around. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out the wiring here for sure. But let's just for now, just to see if it works or not, uh, get some conduit down here and we'll connect the transceiver. So the acclimatizers uh, consume different types of items and they will change the climate tolerances on the bee permanently. Now you can actually breed this into the bee, but for, uh, well, apparently it's one of the more difficult stats to crossbreed onto the bee. So seemingly it's much easier just to make use of the acclimatizer and we can give it snowballs to make it more cold tolerant, lava to make it more heat tolerant, sand and water to adjust the humidity. By the way, that other machine you saw me automate was a fluid solidifier, which is fluid solidifying water into snow. And then it's passed to a compressor, compressing snow down into ice. So I went ahead and put ice on passive, since it's more efficient than using snowballs in the acclimatizer to make them more cold tolerant. So let's scan our Tin Queen here, and it's asking for... It's asking for a, a higher humidity, so... Or sorry, a lower humidity. It's asking for normal humidity. And up here in the jungle, it's uh, damp humidity. So we need to bring it down by about 10%. So I believe the item we want here is to give it water. Uh, I think the quest mentions... Uh, it doesn't mention. 
But it says uh, water here. You can give it water buckets. But actually, okay, we're getting charged now. The water buckets are will be consumed by the acclimatizer, so we're going to lose the bucket. So the cheaper way to do it is to use cans, or actually even better to use the refractory capsule, which is made from refractory wax, and this is a B output, but we don't have it on passive yet. There's a couple of different combs that can give us it. So eventually we will have production of this and we'll switch the capsules, but for now I just batch crafted some cans. And we have this uh, low voltage fluid tank, a reservoir on top to supply water. We'll put two conveyors, one for an input chest, one for an output chest. This one will be insert. So we should be able to fill the cans. We can just drop a bunch of cans in here. That should go into the fluid tank. There we go, it's gonna fill with water. And now we can put this in the acclimatizer along with our B. And uh, I think, so long as I have the right item, oh, it goes in the input slot here. So right now we are, uh, oh, it just went up one. Did you see that? For humidity. So actually we should be able to run it already. That only consumed two water cans. Uh, the amount that it consumes is highly variable. I think it's a random chance uh, for how many input items that you consume here. But uh, the reason I had the Applied Energistics channel is to automatically supply these items eventually, like the lava buckets, the sand. Uh, so actually we can request sand in here, which will make them uh, more tolerant to a dry climate, which we probably won't need up here in the jungle since it's already pretty humid. Um, but actually we should be able to run the Tin Princess now. And it's complaining about no flowers. Is this a different flower requirement? Yeah, it's asking for jungle, which is vines. I mean, I guess we can I guess we can put vines nearby. Well, the vines worked, but as soon as uh, it went through one cycle, it looks like it got back the yeah, the poor humidity tolerance. So we need to go back over here. <laughs> you can see now why I said this was going to be so grindy. Yeah, but we need to wait for this to have the humidity tolerance again. But once, once it goes through a couple of generations, that we should only have to do this once or twice per species. There we go, it's back down to up one. So now we should be able to run it again. And we want to combine it with the drone that also has the humidity tolerance. Once more in the acclimatizer, there we go. And eventually, now we're at the point where all the drones are stacking together with the humidity tolerance acquired. Uh, so it's now just going to keep stacking, we can make our uh, stock of tin drones. And we can move on to the next bee. I actually realized, wait, 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 that uh, oblivion frame is about to, about to perish. We don't want that. But I realized that this actually isn't taking so long. So maybe we don't need these world accelerators here. I don't know. I'm going to do some testing and uh, yeah, try to work through as many bees as we can get to. But as you can probably imagine, I'm most likely going to be at this for a while. This is exciting though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> We're getting so many bees. The first two things I wanted to ensure was that our industrious and imperial bees were running passively. I adjusted the climate tolerances of the imperial bee in the acclimatizer to avoid us having to use the high grow regulator, and I fixed the issue of the drones not stacking to allow us to filter them into a drawer and void excess. So this way the first two alviaries keep producing the materials we need to make more alviaries as we breed more bees. After that, I painstakingly went through all of our current bee species and I verified that we had sufficient quantity of drones for each. For almost all of them we didn't, and so I used our accelerated apiary to correct it. Once the alviaries were functional again and the stock of bees had been addressed, we could then move on to obtaining new species. Some of the crossbreed requirements had us venture out into other biomes, for example a plains biome to breed the rural bee. But most of the early breeding trees only require a specific block underneath the alviary. There were a handful though which require the hellish biome, only found in the nether, namely the fiendish, sinister and demonic bees.
Next though, it was all about repeating the process by following the requirements to breed the new species and generating a good stock before moving down the chain on our way to the explosive and stardust bee. Okay, now that was an absolutely insane grind right there to breed the bees. <laughs> and we're not quite where we want to be yet, the explosive and the stardust, but we're really, really close. Um, so I checked my playtime right before the time lapse that you just saw. Uh, so you should be seeing that right now. I think it was clocked at around 13.09. And let me tell you guys, I've actually had a dream about breeding bees. I, <laughs> I was on at like 6 a.m. this morning breeding bees. Uh, I actually dreamt last night about bees, about forestry bees. This has been a project and a half, let me tell you that much, um, but I'm I'm actually loving it. Unironically, I'm actually having a really great time, and uh, yeah, so we're really close to being able to get the Stardust bees, but uh, let's first check what our playtime is all at right now. 13.20, oh my goodness. <laughs> 13.20, just breeding bees. Let me show you the stats on the quest page. I mean, yeah, we've picked up a, a decent amount of bees here. Yeah, the backup drones here, we have a, a good stock of all the bees. I went through and organized everything. And we have things like Hermetic, we have Certus, we can make Firestone, Ruby, Austere, Sinister, Coal, Zinc, Copper, Iron. We even have the Diamond Bee and Lapis Bee, Redstone Bee, like so many different bees here. And uh, yeah, we got a few more Pristines to work with. I was just in the middle actually of uh, completing this under section. I never actually got around to doing this. And I actually really like it. Um, yeah, I never really got around to doing this until now, but we only have a couple squares left and the diamond wand is also about to break But um, you guys actually reminded me that there is a quest for this. I think it's under building better bases The quest chapter where is that? Yeah here we can get uh, a builder's wand from the quest reward So I made a start on this between episodes You just have to collect a bunch of blocks and we're missing a diamond emerald redstone and gold block and they are the chiseled variants of the of the blocks. So this one is the heads down one, right? That's the last one we need. And this should be our quest. There we go. This builder's wand is actually craftable, but we've not made unstable ingots yet. And I don't really feel like doing this at the moment. Like we need to do that sacrifice thing with the division sigil. We have like a million of those from all the wither kills. I just haven't really got around to doing it. But I guess if the quest gives us gives us an easy way to do it, I'm gonna take it. And besides, we are saving some diamonds this way, not having to craft the builder's ones. This actually takes a fair amount of diamonds, and we're we're quickly running out of diamonds. Although, with any luck, um, as soon as we can get more alviaries, I was able to craft one more. So we have the materials for another alviary. But still, there's some bottlenecks in being able to craft more. Mainly seed oil, actually, which we can fix with bees. Oh yeah, and I fixed the acclimatizers here as well. These have been working really well. And a quick tip as well is to use blaze rods instead of lava buckets. It's a bit more efficient and yeah, it's a bit easier. We're making blaze rods from from the crops, I think. Is it these? Blaze reed? Yeah, this, this gives us blaze rods passively. So yeah, the breeding went relatively smooth actually, all things considered. Even the, even the bees in the nether didn't really give us much issue once we had the apiarist suit because uh, some of them do give you some really nasty effects, like uh, creeper explosions next to you, I think that's the coal bee. And most of the nether bees deal uh, deal damage in the area, unless you're wearing the apiarist suit, which we now have. Honestly, the one that gave me trouble the most though was the secluded bee. The secluded bee only has a 1x fertility stat, so it was only giving us one. Uh, so it was pretty difficult actually to try to duplicate it with the apiary. So I had to actually use a Majestic and put on 4x fertility uh, to give it the stats to give us 
And then, yeah, breed it back to secluded again. And then make more drones that way. Other than those two, though, it was really just a matter of time. And <laughs> just, yeah, just put it in the grind. Put it in the grind. Uh, but that is that is GTNH. And sometimes a bit of grind, uh, some repetitive tasks are kind of nice. You know, we have one square left. One square left. And I missed some blocks here. Wait, this is not a square, is it? Oops. Oh, yeah, that's so much better. That is so much better than what it was. So, for the last two bees, we need the stardust and we need explosive. Explosive is going to give us the longest life, and stardust is going to give us the blinding production speed. Starting with stardust, we need zinc plus ender, and ender we can actually trade from Diddy, although the ender drones you can get in the end dimension. But there is an extra requirement for this, we need something called stardust ore as a foundation, and we have to do this mutation in the end. So it took about 45 minutes actually of searching around the end, way longer than I thought. <laughs> I was flying around for ages and ages, but we ended up about 2,500 blocks away, and we eventually found it hidden underneath one of the large end islands. Oh, found it, I think. Is this it? Yes, yes, perfect. It's very well hidden. Very, very well hidden, um, that is for sure. However, we do now have our Stardust Ore. I've went ahead and set up the Alvary here in the End Dimension. We're on the main End Island, although the map is broken apparently. We have our uh, Stardust Ore underneath. I mean, yeah, look at this texture here, that is sneaky. Yeah, broke some of the Ender Hives and we have a Ender Princess. We also have a Zinc Queen. Oh, that should have been a Princess. Uh, I do have an Apiary here, fortunately, to run our cycle. Oh, of course, not bright enough. Nice, well, this is why I have the Ender. Maybe we can do Ender plus Zinc. Is this going to work? I'm not so familiar on the stats of the Ender stuff, uh, to be honest. It's complaining about a lack of flowers. And the flower type just says End. So I'm not sure what exactly that is. Wait, am I crazy? Does Chorus Flower even exist in this version? No, this is 1.7. Chorus Flower doesn't exist. So what could it be for the End? Yeah, the End flower type. Is it just Obsidian? Let's try just using Obsidian. Maybe that's going to work. And we'll break and replace it. We have power in the back. Doesn't appear to be obsidian. Okay, let me find out what this is. Ah, of course, it's going to be the dragon egg, which we have on our Grandmaster Magic Energy Absorber, generating us power. So we're going to have to borrow this for a little while. Oops. Please don't say that fell into the void. Where? Oh, it's hidden. It's right here. I think it's shift right click. Or is it shift left click? There we go. We cannot afford to lose this thing because the dragon eggs are not so easy to get in this, I don't think. Now are you going to be happy? You should have flowers. Yes, it is, but it's going to poison us unless we have our apiarist suit on. Or do something. It's damaging us. I'm doing quite a decent amount of damage at that as well. It didn't work. It didn't work. Huh. So there, there's three requirements. We need added humidity, stardust ore, and a dimension end. Is this added humidity? Oh, we're at normal humidity. All right, well, we're going back for a fourth time back to the overworld. <laughs> we're going to have to get a hydro regulator, right, and some lava. We should have one in our AE system since I, since I removed it from that other setup. Unfortunately, we don't have any lava, though, as it did run through it all. Oh, do we need multiple? Don't tell me we need multiple of these. It's only normal. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back for a fifth time. Are you kidding me? Okay, now are we at added? Yes, we're at added humidity. Okay, so this should work this time. Zinc plus Ender Drone. Uh, let's actually do the Ender Queen. Too dry? Maybe we can do this the other way around with the Zinc Princess and Ender Drone. I did bring a flower along. It's still too dry. Dang it. <laughs> We're going to have to go back and use the acclimatizer. And uh, hopefully this all works first time here. Yes, perfect. Nice. How many times have I been in the end? Potentially a quest. Although I'm not sure if we've even, even unlocked the quest or if there even is a quest for it. Yeah, not every bee has a quest. I think there's like around 400 bees, 450 bees, and there's definitely not 450 quests here, so... Uh, yeah, I think we're done here. Um, yeah, now it's just asking for normal added, which we 
we should have back at the base, so we can uh, duplicate both of these uh, with our uh, fast apiary setup. You know what, I'm going to leave it here just in case. I mean, I've already been through the portal many times anyway, so coming back once more <laughs> isn't going to be the end of the world. I want to make sure we can duplicate these drones so we never have to, uh, yeah, breed it again. But as far as I understand, we're not going to have any issue here other than the flowers. It's asking for books. Am I reading that right? Yeah, it's asking for a bookshelf. I, I assume it's a bookshelf. Oh yeah, in the world accelerator, you can actually increase the speed as well. Uh, I didn't realize that when I first placed it, but uh, I remembered shortly after, or uh, yeah, pretty quickly after I started doing the time lapse, I remembered you could wrench it and it changes the amount of tick acceleration. Um, but yeah, we're getting our Stardust, and this one of course has the blinding production speed, which we're gonna try to pass, well, we will pass on to all the other bees. Okay, Dragon Egg, you're gonna go back where you belong, generate us some more power. And for the last bee, we're gonna need some explosive TNT. We're gonna need some ITNT, industrial TNT. So industrial TNT is something that we've just been batch crafting up until now, and it's mainly used in the implosion compressor to craft the rockets. Fortunately, we had five pieces left, um, so we are gonna have to set up um, production of ITNT. But actually, this explosive bee, once we have it, is gonna be able to just make us ITNT directly. And it saves us a whole like chemical reactor, having to make nitration mixture and gel toluene. It's not exactly difficult, but I mean, the more problems we can solve with just the bees, the better. Okay, let's sacrifice a piece here. And I think if you punch this, it ignites, but I'm hoping it has gravity so we can get rid of it in the hives. Yes, it does, okay. The queen is doing her thing. I forgot to check the percentage chance. Okay, this is only 4%, so we're not necessarily guaranteed a mutation here. Fingers crossed, though. It should be at 5%. Okay, we got we got the drones, but no princess. Second time around. Still no princess, but we got another two drones. At least it's given us two drones to work with at a time here. All right, so we got our explosive, and this, should, this is going to be longest lifespan, which essentially means that... And our quest which essentially means that it lives, uh, the queen lives longer when it's when she's running her production cycles and therefore generates more output in the alviaries. That isn't necessarily true when it comes to the industrial apiary. I've had a couple of you guys comment on this thing. There is a powered version, basically a Gregtech version. Uh, in this one, you want shortest production or shortest lifespan since it, you want the ticks to go through as fast as possible. But in the forestry machines and the alviary, you want longest lifespan on all your bees. So yeah, we should now have all the tools to uh, give the perfect stats to all of our bees. So essentially what I'm going to do now is, I have another large grind ahead of me, but essentially what we're going to do now is pick up the Majestic Bee, since it has 4x fertility, and then we're going to give that the longest lifespan from the explosive. We're going to give it the blinding production from the Stardust. And then there is actually a few, a few others in here. I'll give you a list at the end of the episode. But... Um, the rest of the stats here, like for example, Diurnal, Nocturnal, Tolerant Flyer, and Cave Dwelling, there is a couple of uh, bees in here. I don't remember exactly which ones contain which, um, but I, I have seen them uh, in the last, well, in all the time I've been breeding bees, we definitely do have these stats, so they are somewhere. And then the Tolerance, we just have to, yeah, put them through the, through these things. And it's placed snow everywhere as well. That must be the effect of the, the explosive. Yeah, for the climate, we just need to use the acclimatizer, and we should have the bees we want. All right, everyone, so it's the next day once again. I've been doing lots of bee breeding, and we're almost there. We're so very close, but I'm kind of running out of time for this episode, and it's getting a bit lengthy, um, but it is really only a matter of time before we get this perfect bee. I mean, we're, we're pretty much there with this rocky princess. We have the longest lifespan. We have our blending production speed. The pollination stat is only important for tree breeding, which we're not going to get into. It's not necessary at all, so this stat is irrelevant. Unfortunately, though, we have uh, the rocks flower type, which means it wants cobblestone everywhere, and I don't really want to place cobblestone everywhere, so that's one to fix. I think ideally we just want the regular uh, flower type stat here. We have beatific effect, which I think gives regeneration around you, which is, I mean, not necessarily a bad thing. I don't know how beneficial that is up here, but maybe for when we're doing blood magic, like when we start that, which might be soon actually. We have our diurnal, nocturnal, 
Unfortunately, no, no tolerant flyer. I lost that a couple of generations ago. I mean, yeah, just look at how many bees we have now. Look at this. One, one compressed chest, two compressed chest, three compressed chest, four compressed chest, five compressed chest, six compressed chest. <laughs> Plus all of our, uh, all the backup drones, all the pristines, all the ignobles. Uh, we have a couple in here, which is from another lineage. This is like the Elder My Mysterious stuff, which is like another part of the quest line we have to go through. Yeah, it's like over here somewhere. I started doing this and then realized we don't actually need it to get the stats we want, so this is like on pause, if you like. So yeah, we're like two stats away, which is, it's really only a matter of time, like I said. We just have to throw it through this this apiary like a couple hundred more times, <laughs> and it could take like 20 minutes, it could take like two hours, but I will get it for the next episode. So to help you guys out, I also put together this uh, one-page guide for the perfect stats. The bees that have listed for the stats um, are not the only ones with those stats, although I believe the explosive bee is the only one with the longest lifespan at the moment. It's one of the only ones, so yeah, it, well, it's definitely easiest to obtain, so you want to go for explosive. Same thing for stardust. Um, I think that's the only one with blinding production speed. But definitely for the last four stats, there are many different bees in the game which will give you those. Uh, Rocky is probably the easiest one, but that has 1x fertility, so it's a little bit finicky. That's why I'm uh, struggling with the very last stat here on our, uh, on our Rocky Princess, the Tolerant Flyer. Which actually isn't necessary, that's just, it works during the rain, but it never rains here, so... I may not even bother, but, uh, <laughs> I kind of just want it, just, just because, uh, so... I think we can uh, tentatively turn this off and say we've... Oh, the game's not going to let us turn it off. Dang it. <laughs> I think we've more or less achieved our goal for today. Um, but I will... Uh, you're going to see the B with the, with the perfect stats next episode, that's for sure. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Thank you so much, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I know it's getting a bit lengthy again, but, you know, we'll be back. I don't know if it's going to be a B episode next time. What do you guys think? Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be doing bees. I'm actually loving this project so much. And so, yeah, we have to start doing all the passive automations now that we have the stats and we have the bees. So much to do. But for now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.